Ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Con Work. This is Rang Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, we are coming to you today on Illamonsi with actually a new feature here. We, this is a standard SD2 uh, play. And I guess, you know, Rang, who's bringing and what do they have here? Well, on left-hand side in the blue, we have Alpha Dog ALA Testin playing Panda Division Tartra with a balanced income. And on the right-hand side in red, we have Gonzo playing Task Force Butler with also a balanced income. So we haven't really bottled before, and I haven't really had you know practice any Tantras recently. So what what's going on with these two divisions? These are the part of the new free LC, correct? Yeah. Uh, Task Force Butlers kind of reminds me of like a second New Zealand or third Canadian aggressive, uh, fast, not greatly equipped division, but they have a mix of American and French units as well as a whole plethora of Allied Air Forces. And Panzer Division Tartra is just a very good Panzer Division rib. Some really good infantry, such as Volkstrom, which we're not going to be seeing any of them today, but they're like 15 man disheartened troops, but they get Panzerfaust and they get a lot of them. Probably armed by Trophy Oge, knowing it's Volkstrom. That's true. That's true. I mean, today we are seeing Lendeschutz and OSTs, which, you know, I'm pretty sure it means Ostruppen and not original soundtrack, but the jury's still out on that one. Um, I did find out a really cool thing. Actually, we were talking about it just before we went live here, that the Task Force Butler was formed around a regiment from my home state of New Jersey, which which boggles my mind. Like I said to you, it's the you know <laughs> he was very surprised. I was. I was like something good can come out of Jersey, um, because you know all we're known for is the Jersey Shore, um, and Sopranos. That's also true. The part that the best side of Italians to come out of New Jersey, as opposed to <laughs> the ones who came here from Long Island. Um, but regardless, regardless, we are seeing in the meantime we are getting a return to stewards, which I feel like are just so underrepresented in so much of the play that we see. Uh, but mm -hmm. these are recon stewards, which is probably one of the reasons why we're seeing them. Excellent optics, lots of 70, you know, 7.62s, 12.7s. It's important to drive up here along the middles here. But I guess, what's going on in the south? What's going on down there? Down south, we got a Pussif Malfa Dog trying to get through its rather narrow and tricky choke point. But there's a lot of rifles here. But at the same time, as a lot of German infantry as well, I mean, those pioneers of the MG26s are... Actually, quite good because MG 26s aren't that bad. This those CQC able machine guns really do add up in those CQC fights, such as Forest. That's true. That's very true. Um, now, one of the kind of interesting things as well, you and I were talking about coming into this, is that you know we always prattle on about how wonderful it is to see so many different kind of groups represented. But I know I said to you today after this free LC came out. It's really cool to see start seeing these kind of more unknown divisions. Like I had never heard of Task Force Butler before it came out over here with SD2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the, one of the best things about SD2 is just the huge diversity of divisions. I mean, there's no other World War II game where you can play Romanians, Hungarians, Finns, Brits, American, Germans, French, Maori. Uh, there's even like some Belgians, yeah, Maori, yeah. New Zealand, South African. Eventually, it's just bloody everything in this game. Yeah, it's a really, really great thing to see. Um, actually, I'm kind of fascinated to see how this is going to go as we go into B and C for uh, Task Force Butler. Because it looked like we definitely loaded up on that C card more than anything else. Or at least far more than we used to kind of seeing for most players with a balanced income. Indeed, indeed. But Panzer Division Tartar is a very good B phase, C phase, or like, like, like game Panzer Division. Mm -hmm. Because you have so many tank slots, and then you have even more anti-tank slots. You have the Yag Panzers, Hatchers, even some Pack 43 Krupp models. They have really nasty Panzer Division, all things considering. Yes, they are. And we're actually seeing some of their light vehicles are kind of slinking on through the front lines. You do have a 231 over here. Not really engaging just yet with that land of and kind of taking a lot of firepower. But there's rifles again. One of the things I already see as being probably a bit of a hassle here is that there's not a lot of infantry anti-tank over here for Task Force Butler. So how are they going to match up against a Panzer Division who's got a lot of Panzers? Yeah, they don't... Yeah, like your second New Zealand or third Canadian, they don't have a whole lot of anti-tank and not a whole lot of heavy anti-tank either. So it's going to be about the use of good artillery, I think, because they do have that. I mean, we've seen some long toms in his build. But, yeah, using those Shermans and, like, Jurits and Wolverines, a few tanks that do get effectively, will be rather important, because they're the 2-2-2 two, two, two and 2-3-1s have been causing a bit of a hassle for the time being. 
That certainly does seem to be the case, but we can see right about now down south, for example, those Shermans are still quite deadly. Um, you know, they aren't the late the late uh, models just yet, but they still could be quite, quite deadly. Because they have those stabilizers, man. You know what? It was. It's been a while since we actually got to talk about the stabilizers. I feel like we get a lot of Soviets over here. But you can see right now, they may not have a lot of infantry anti-tank, but it is 15-9 in favor of Gonzo. A lot of that does come to that central position, but down south seems to be turning around. Indeed, he has managed to stabilize it a bit. And now Alpha Dog, I mean, he's bringing in some more reinforcements. I, I see only some Feljagers, not a whole lot here. So maybe Gonzo can reverse his southern area and actually start pushing up to the crossroads and some rather nice territory. Now, one thing we haven't really talked about too, too much is that some of the lighter anti-tank over here for Tartra is uh, just a rather underwhelming Czech Pack 37. Um... And I think that one of the things I you know, at least I've, I've valued over here with the AT guns, is that so many of the AT guns have at least some sort of HE, but those light calibers have nothing but a solid shot, which is a bit of a problem in these days. Yeah, yeah, they're not, I mean, honestly, they're not too bad. You have that 15 rounds a minute fire rate, so when you do start shooting at a tank, your gun gets stunned up very quickly. And even if you don't penetrate, you have a good chance of causing nasty, nasty critical hits. But that's the thing, I mean, it's great that you can get some criticals and all that, but you don't really want to try to be bowling for taking out that infantry. This is not, nope. you know, you know, Napoleon Total War kind of idea. No, no. Yeah, it's this really good use of uh, combined arms right now down south here from Gonzo, using that 81mm mortar as a rather nasty radio trait to just get some rather accurate fire. And now if the tank's being brought in, he's managing to push on through, and I'll have Flag Valin. Proven to be a bit of a hassle, but once those stewards get lined up, I mean, they're nasty. Absolutely nasty. Yes, they are. But they have, they've got to be careful, because we've got two P3s coming through, and while technically they can go, oof, that IG-18 is just roasting from long range. Damn. That's that's shocking. Those guys never hit anything. Yeah, and they have so low, low amount of heat shells that they usually run out before you kill... The target but yeah really good clutch from the ig18 uh but we do have two p3ls coming on in and their skin there's not that thick i mean they, they do go down pretty easily but you can't turn your back on them just yet no no in a cqc fight like this they're honestly not that bad i do have those ap shell shells which allow you to get through the thickest of armor the high veteran she works and well, they're a little bit more expend, yeah, much more expendable compared to a seventy-five point uh, Panzer IV. True, true. Now, uh, I do want to leave the the middle here for just sorry, the bottom for half a second. We'll be right back to it because up to the north, we are seeing the central position has fallen a little bit awry over here for Alpha Dog testing as well. Yeah, this is a really good position Gonzo's meant to get himself into. He can just clear off the rest of that forest where the Flamen Roth and that Lone Land shooting is. Slap a few AT guns in there, he pretty much has the middle locked and loaded, fully secured. You know, of course, at longer range, he's going to have a little bit of issue. I mean, that Ron Jagpanja is going to be very difficult to deal with, because you don't really have the heavy AT with Task Force Butler. No, no, but you have the M10. You have the M10, indeed. Actually, does have AP shell shells, which helps out a bit, but that's but really all you got. And even if you just get some criticals on that too, it feels like the Yogpanzer seems to have a higher crit occurrence. I know that's just that's an observation bias thing, but I feel like the Yogpanzers have two settings, and, it, and neither one of them is healthy. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there's there's that to contend with for sure. Um, yeah. Down to the south, of course, in the, in the moment that we turned away, M4 has been bailed out. Um, Regrettably, there seems to be very little blue over here around this crossroads any longer, and I think that has been a consequence of those rifle late BARs, which are rather deadly, I have to say. Yeah, I mean, all semi-automatics, yes, the bar isn't a great machine gun at long range, but it can fire CQC, yes. which in the forest fight is pretty damn good. You know, I know the grease gun wasn't particularly well distributed but i'd always would love to see more grease guns yeah i think it's more like tankers and yes like you know rear rear echelon troops which are really equipped with them yes. yeah it's a pretty cool smg and very uh, cheap but it very works. very cheap 
going back to the middle real quick. It seems that the, the southern side has died down for half a second. To the north, the Argosy Lendeschutzen are going to get absolutely blown to shreds by these engineers who almost can go on top of the hillside and start throwing charges down to the bottom. Mm hmm. Yeah, those oh, poor yeah. guys, they, they don't have a prayer. Yeah, I don't think Lendeschutzen opener has really. Uh, helped Alpha Dog all that much. He's been losing these rather critical infantry fights, and honestly, they're not that bad. Fifteen points for they do have a bloody machine gun for for fifteen points this hard, and that's not bad. But um, he definitely needed some more quality CQC infantry because all these important fights have been CQC fights, and he's starting to get some SS um, grenadiers up north. So maybe I could start turning the tide up here. Also, we've been preaching about the opportunities for Alpha Dog's AI testing tanks, and at the same time, uh, we just saw Mr. I, at least I did. I missed a, a P thirty eight run that came in and killed the Yacht Panzer. Um, oh, the M wow. tens killed the Stug, and down to the south, while we do have the Sturm Grenadiers, I, I have to wonder: would they be better served going to that central position to kind of shore things up, or is it better? Oh, he's got some going center too. He's sending the Sturm Grenadiers up north. Oh no, never mind. Does run going north? But yeah, yeah, I do see what you mean. Some infantry in the center to get back into that forest would be quite critical. You can't really afford to lose that forest from Alpha Dog side. Or indeed, even look at the investment of how many P3s are going to the south. I feel like you got to be spending a couple of these at least a central position. Yeah, I think he's really just trying to battle on making his southern push work. And honestly, he can do it. The M4s bailed out. There's a 57mm gun slowly moving up and... I don't think all these rifles can deal with all of these panzers. But there's another Sherman coming. There's Marky Sards coming. And there's mortars down here. That's I feel like that's the one thing that we're missing is that yes, oh wait, never mind, I have to take that back. Because there's M10s and Shermans and a mortar up to the northern side with, with radio support. Mm -hmm. And now another M48105 is being brought in as well. So I, I take that back. I think I was just looking at the flag dispersion and, and the difference in flags as we speak. And I just felt very, very awkward about the current situation tactically. Yeah, with a map like, well, this map in particular, really the central point is such a vital point because it is so flag rich. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is right, Gonzo does have his rather gnarly lead so far. But yeah, for Alpha Dog, if you, even if he wants to do anything meaningful in the center, he kind of needs to retake the south because that's kind of the main road into getting into actually a really good underbelly in Gonzo's line here. If he can retake the south, go up the road, there's like a bunch of flags he could pretty easily take. You know, you're absolutely right, and that's something I hadn't quite considered on the, on the face of it. Um, I am fascinated to see what happened with these this French Marquisards coming on in. Because the London Schutzen, as we've talked already, those guys have already just kind of folded like a cheap card table. Because of Strom Grenadiers, that's going to be a rather different story. Yeah, they're much, much better equipped. Very, very well equipped. Whenever you have Sturm Gewehrs, I don't think you can complain. No, but when you have three squads that all have Molotovs, I think it's probably a better idea to maybe gripe a little bit. So Yeah, yeah, those Marky Sarge are really good for 25 points. you got the free stands, the Molotovs, the Raider trait, CQC uh, machine gun. They're pretty damn decent. You know, and I want to... Ooh, shooter killed already. Uh, the 222 has gone down. M4 has made it very much out of line of sight here. Guys, redeploy that tank. Uh, yeah. But that's not going to be happening. It looks like he's going to engage that M1 instead. Which, at the end of the day, is probably a better call for him anyway. Yeah, and the Marcus Hards are making fantastic progress through the forest, cutting a pretty deep hole in Alpha Dog's line. Well, I think part of it, too, is he tried to, like, a vague kite, but I think that his... The rest of his infantry wasn't able to swing around, and his light vehicles were too busy engaging the Sherman to maybe start supporting the push against the Marquis Sards. And you can see right now, when the Sturm Grenadiers had, you know, come out to play, it gets a K-98 and an F, you know, an FM-24. That's that's not too much to worry about. Yeah, long range of Sturm Grenadiers are all pound him. But also being pounded is Alpha Dog's infantry because this is such a choke point area. It was 81 millimeter mortars that are causing absolute havoc, and we're seeing the same thing from the German side. 81 mils starting to be brought up, and yeah, artillery in the southern side is a very strong tool. Yeah, yes, goddamn. indeed. And actually, I want to make a quick call out the Comestia Freak. These guys are, 
I, I feel like they kind of feel like they're supposed to be ranger squads to me, but with a bit more emphasis yeah, kind of in terms of that so close CQC. Yeah. And the bazooka, which is nice. I like a, like a super ranger marauder squad. Yeah. Or like a, the Fauci Miyaga recon teams of the, uh, like 10 man teams of the Panzer Shrek. A quick call in the meantime. We have a bit of a furball happening to the north. Um, Actually, Hellcat trying to come out just about now at a Dornier 2, uh, 217. Um, I think a P-38 had just gone down here. Mm-hmm. And that uh, 217 hasn't had a whole lot of immediate engagements otherwise. No. But he's making a, a bizarrely slow run. Okay, no, never mind. Flying around now, taking some very casual 50 cal fire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. More than this person to the south. How many? He's bringing them over here in B2? Oh, jeez. Okay, guys. You know, we had an Airsots play last week that was was honestly like chef's kiss delicious. It was it was yeah. really, really great play. Unfortunately, I feel like if... Had there been more of an emphasis on maybe MGs to kind of support these guys, or maybe some artillery, some tube artillery, or heck, even maybe some officers like these Feldjägers being brought in a little bit earlier that might have put them in a better stance, but they they have not done a whole lot for Alpha Dog so far. No, yeah, he he really needs like some more substantial infantry, like or some grenadiers or some Panzer grenadiers, which he had a little bit early on with some Panzer grenadiers and pioneers, but right now just throwing him up against Gonzo's line without any fire support. Isn't really performing all that round. Gonzo is starting to get a decent amount of self propelled guns in the field. And once again, they have radios. And on a map like this, where it's choke pointy, artillery is bloody deadly. Yes, it is. And I kind of like the self propelled guns. It's, it's a, you know, a function we don't tend to see very often over with the Soviets, of course, as they prefer to just kind of say, you know, targeted fire. What's that? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's nice to see. I'm going to put this in air quotes, maybe though you probably can hear it, surgical firepower, um, where it doesn't obliterate an entire zip code. So Yeah. 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 And then just, I mean, radio treat is such a oh, yeah. huge, like, buff to any artillery unit. It's also, yeah, I mean, there was a period where we saw a lot of artillery, like, on-map artillery being used. And then for, like, the past few weeks, it's all just really been off-map, but... Now we're starting to kick it back into the on-map artillery of this replay here. Like God, oh, yes. I mean, just look down south. It is bloody turkey shoot full of mortars. Yeah. Yeah, and the unfortunate thing, too, is that you know all this artillery is here. Maybe redeploy someplace else. Um, or, heck, even call it in, you know, from that northern road. Because I feel like he's got that, that southern road completely zeroed. So... Regardless, it will be enough to push these back, not without loss, not without considerable loss, but they will be able to push back Task Force Butler Infantry. Yeah, and no, I think he needs to be a bit more aggressive with his Panzer III. So, as we know, there's not really much anti-tank in the forest, but mm. he really needs to get the armor up into the front to actually support his infantry push. Yes, yes. But I think watching one of his recon vehicles getting uh, murked by the cavalry scouts over here with that bazooka... That, that guy, again, there is certainly a, a certain weight of fire that you have to kind of deal with, and you have to be quite afraid. So that, that tentative, is, I think, is working against him right now. Yeah, and they're going to be seeing that off-map artillery drop on the sack, and that's pretty much going to kill Alpha Dog's chances of making this southern push actually work, and also the armored support being brought in from Gonzo. I was going to watch probably what it, what's going to be the only gun run over here from the 217 to the northern side, blowing holes into that poor mortar. And the 203 comes down, first shell kills a, two, a Panzer III, second shell kills an Olanda Schutzen, and the rest of these guys are just getting pounded into paste. With the addition yep. of the M M4 upguns, I mean, that's... that's. It's not over, but it ain't, it ain't pretty at this point. <laughs> no, pretty at all, that is... Absolutely devastating the strike, and Gonjo going to be calling in a second run as well. We're seeing the Marquis reinforcements being brought in, and the commandos holding their ground. So, yeah, he's doing pretty good for himself down south, managing to shore up, yeah, defensive line. 
You know, one of the things you and I talked about before this match really got started was a lot of the tanks over here for uh, Tatra, like as a P-38T, I thought it was kind of a really, really interesting play, but never really seemed to get going. You know, having the P-38s being slotted in along the Tiger, maybe using the Tiger to kind of run point, and have the P-38s over here just to kind of do light infantry suppression material like that. HE-111 in the meantime, real quick, bombing the road. Going to do a decent amount of damage here to finally kill that artillery commander, but it's taken just so long for that to happen. Yeah. Um, but it feels like we're not really getting a good, true sense of what can be done over here by Panzer Division Tetra. Yeah, it has really come down to the infantry fight so far in this replay, and mm -hmm. while he didn't really bring in the best of his infantry, the land shoots and spam doesn't really work all that well in CQC fights. So let's think about this for a second. Would it have been better served had it been something like Slutsk? Yeah, Slutsk East, East, for example. Like, at that point, we, yeah. have, we have some open roads, we have some opportunities to have it really sit there, have that bite and hold mentality, as opposed to these close crossroad fights that's where, you know, engaging from a couple hundred meters at best. Yeah, you just spam Slugs, Hetchers, and the Act Pangers, and you just win any open ground fight. You have, yep. you have a lot of really good. Uh, anti-tank for Panzer Division Tatra, and a lot of it is mainly like medium focus, like of Jag Panzers and Stugs. It's not like you're reliant on Panthers, which aren't really that great in Run V1s. So, and you have a lot of them too, so you can just go for a long time with all that armor. But um, honestly, again, all the same, it's kind of nice to see free LC continue to be an engaging kind of opportunity for you guys out there. So um, even as we go into the last few seconds over here, even as we kind of say congratulations to Gonzo and better luck next time to Alpha Dog, love to see new divisions, love to kind of always see just kind of different, different stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Both really like that's the two full divisions. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Quite unique. Very unique. Uh, but today, you know, Jersey reigns supreme. As uh, then we think the KD is pretty close. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the kills over here, we can see it. Like a 57 mil takes out three armored vehicles, or M4 A1 takes out two armored vehicles and a gun. I mean, a lot of the infantry maybe not the most effective, but the vehicles had it where it counts. Yeah, and loss is One. nothing really crazy. Just the Panzer Free doing a bit decent. Yep. Yep. yep, so, guys, if you are going to go and pick up to play Tatra, my, my suggestion anyway, and I'm sure you could probably disagree with me here, is maybe keep the Landeschützen until B. Or just uh, bring Volkstrom instead. Even like, more so. out both the Volks The Volks 15 points for, like, a shit ton of Panzerfaust is ridiculously good. Exactly. Like, you just spam them everywhere, they bring in tanks, trophy out of the Panzerfaust blows it up. Yeah. Pretty easy. And, and that's the fun thing. I mean, 12-year-olds like explosions. We like explosions. It's happy people all around, so it works out. Yeah. Yeah. Let those let those get and go back home. So. <laughs> but, folks, that's going to about do it for us today. Um, thanks for coming out to enjoy the free LC with us. But until next time, I'm Con Ulbrich. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.